Previously, we learned if we have a URL that looks like this and has an equal sign followed by some kind of a value, we learned that this value will be sent to the web application and the web application is gonna process that value and use it within its execution before returning the response to us. And therefore, by manipulating this value, we can manipulate the web application to either display useful information to us or to exploit it. And we're gonna talk about that later on in the course as I show you how to discover and exploit a large number of bugs and vulnerabilities. Now, all of these examples are examples of sending data over the HTTP get method because we can see the parameter and its value in the URL. Another method of sending data to the web application is POST and is typically used when you submit input boxes. So an example is a login form, as you can see in here, where you have to type your username and password. And once you click on login, these two values will be submitted to the web application, but you will not see the values in here in the URL because it's being sent as a POST request, not as a GET request that we have in here. But similar to what we have in here, these values will actually be submitted to the web application, and therefore we can manipulate them to manipulate the execution of the web application and possibly discover bugs and vulnerabilities. So any value you type in any kind of input box is usually submitted to the web application and you should test it for the bugs and the vulnerabilities that you will learn later on in the course. So another example in here in our own website in zsecurity.org is the search. If you click on the search, you're gonna get an input box where you can type a value in it and whatever value you type in here, the web application is gonna search all of its content for that value. Therefore, we can manipulate this value to manipulate this search function and possibly discover bugs and vulnerabilities in this website. Now, this is all great, but there is a large number of data that gets submitted to the web application through hidden input boxes, through JavaScript and Ajax that we can't simply modify by modifying the URL or input boxes. For example, if we scroll down in here and simply go to the third page, you will notice that we have page equal three, which is a value that is being submitted to the website that we can manipulate, but there is so much more data being sent in the background that we didn't see. And I'm gonna show you how to see it in a minute. Another example is if we go to the shop and go to my cart, and I've already added some products into it, and if I remove one of these products, again, we can see that we have a parameter called remove item and the value is one. So we can manipulate this to manipulate the web application, but much more data was submitted in the background that we need to test. And the only way for us to test this is to intercept this data using a proxy. So essentially what we want to do is to have a web proxy running and have our browser submit all of the requests to this proxy so that we can analyze this data and modify it and then send the modified request to the web server or the web application that is running on the cloud. This way, we'll be able to see all of the hidden requests and we'll be able to actually see the request after the website applies all of the changes that it wants to apply for it. For example, sometimes we have security measurements and filtering running on the client side. So we'll be able to see the request after all of these filters have applied. And therefore we can even bypass some security by intercepting the request right before it leaves our computer to the target website. So to do this, we're gonna use the proxy functionality of web application penetration testing software called Burp Suite. Burp Suite is pre-installed in hacking operating systems such as Kali and Parrot. If you're using your own operating system, you can download it from this page. I'm gonna include its link in the resources. And you wanna make sure you select the Burp community. This is the free version. There is a paid version, but we're gonna be using the community throughout the course. It's more than sufficient, but I do recommend the professional once you take this to a professional level. So for now, you're perfectly fine with using the community. 
Then you wanna select your operating system. So I'm selecting Mac, but if you have Linux or Windows, you can select it from here and you click on download. Installing it is very, very simple. All you have to do is simply run the executable that you download and follow the installation wizard. I'm not gonna cover that, it's very, very simple. Once you have it installed, you can run it from your start menu if you're on Windows or from your applications if you're on Linux. And on OS X, you simply again have to go to your launchpad and look for burp. Now I do have the professional, but I'm gonna go with the community because like I said, we're gonna be using that for the whole course. And once you run it, you're gonna get this window that'll help you either open an existing project, start a new project on disk to save your changes or simply start with a temporary one. The other two options are only available for the pro, but a temporary project is perfectly fine. That just means that once you close the application, you will lose whatever progress you made, but that's gonna be perfectly fine as you will see. Next, it's asking you for the settings. If you have a special configuration file that you wanna use, we're gonna keep everything the same. So we're just gonna start verb. And perfect, right now we have the dashboard of Burp Suite. And as you can see, you have a large number of tabs in here to do different things within this framework. This is a very big program that can be used to do so much. So I don't want you to be overwhelmed. We will be using this throughout the whole course and I'll be introducing you to a lot of the features that you see in here. We're gonna be talking a lot about the dashboard and all of that later on in the hacker methodology at the end of the course. So don't worry about this at all. We will be breaking up its functionality one by one and I will be teaching you how to use it as we go through the course, as I show you other bugs and other vulnerabilities. 